Hello and welcome to the Lark Noobs. I'm Ian, and as ever, I'm joined by my friend Dave. Hello. And I think we're going to talk about the best Empire event that I've ever been to. Arguably. Yeah. I mean, I... like the first event, I think will always hold a special place. Uh, but well, as you can hear by your voice, Ian. Yes. You've. Uh, we're both still recovering. Yes. Um, it... My brain is still a, a giant pile of goop. Mentally um, still recovering. My feet are very very tired. Both of our voices have taken a bit of a hammering yes. due to the amount of talking that we've been doing. But, shouting. Um, <laughs> shouting. All of it. Vigorous debates. Um, oh, it was so good. It was... Yeah, I mean, we should just crack into so, it, but it was so, honestly great. Event two is spring. Yes. Which is a big event for Navarre. Yes. Um, it's kind of a big, fun celebration event for Navarre. Yeah, right? I mean, there's like... The, there's a whole thing of like you just kind of like shout out it's it's spring and then everybody kind of mimics it yeah, it's really cool there's cool stuff like yeah. the, there's an unburdening where basically if you have a really kit, cool. you can give it away I wasn't really involved in any of that nor was I none uh, of it at all no so but it was a lot of fun to be around it, I mean Navarre is already an amazing community to be part of yeah. so knowing that we were going into spring and there was a whole bunch of things that had been kind of happening. I think everyone was super jazzed after E1. Mm-hmm. And was kind of like, let's really pump it up for E2. The whole nation I and think, the whole of I the think, empire was just really buzzing. I don't know about anyone else, but I, 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 I heard a couple of people say something to the similar effect. I was in a weird headspace going into E1. I yeah. think a lot of people were in a weird headspace going into E1. I, th- I think if you listen to the... Uh, the E1 episodes, mm. I think they show that we were in a weird headspace. And there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's all, all the things that have happened, the massive well, stuff. I, that... I think anything that you, anything that you're like, wait two years for, yeah. and are like really, really hepped up, and you have all these expectations, yes. all these wants of a thing. Like, yeah. uh, and this goes into like, not what PD are doing with the game, but how you're interacting with yes. it. You want to, you want to get everything out. And I think it was just like, in a weird head. This time round, yes, I was like just super focused on things I had to do yeah. and really, really hype on getting involved. So a couple of things. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I am the ambassador to Jean. Yes. Um, which I got elected to at the end of uh, last summit on the yeah. Sunday. So basically it went from Sunday uh, into the Senate. I got elected and that's basically end of event. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, man, what was going to happen? Like, yeah. uh, this is really exciting. So, the Winds of War came out and the Winds of Fortune came out. Yeah. And fuck me, it was like, in the Winds of Fortune, there yeah. is a section that is on all, all the diplomatic stuff, okay? Yeah. Like the kind of foreign nation stuff, what's happening around the world, all yeah. this jazz. And I look down and there's one just called the, the Yarmish Ultimatum, okay? Yeah. And it's literally like, if we don't get a message, because no one's messaged them in so long, yeah. they're like, like jilted and are yeah. like, could someone please just send a message from the Empire yeah. or yeah. we'll assume that we are enemies. basically at war and at yeah. our enemies. So I was like, right. Firstly, I need to get a winged messenger off, which is like a ritual to try and send off yeah. to try and get. So I, 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 I penned a letter before I got there yeah. and was basically ready for that. So for those Empire, sorry, non-Empire players, and I suppose Empire players as well, uh, who are new, um, there are rituals that mages have to do on the field and they basically will. Uh, they're like an RP process that you essentially have to go through to then initiate the mechanical benefit. In this instance, sending a message off to another yeah. individual. So that was one thing I had to think about. Um, the other thing that I thought about, and this is going to talk about like my headspace going into this, yeah. right? Was if you want to, let's say if you're a you're a player sitting at home yeah. and all you want is to watch the world burn, yeah. okay, and that's your whole thing yeah. is let's see how much trouble I can get the empire in, yeah. And you read something that basically says unless this character does a thing, yeah, we will be at war, yeah. Okay, this just made me think. Well, how hard would it be to someone just as a side? I'm going to go and bump off Gellert Ashbourne. Yeah. And therefore, no letter to Jean. Yeah. And you know, it's a really nice little neat little solution there. Yeah. And this thought sat in the back of my mind and planted a seed. Oh, it was very telling. It was and very telling seed, how much... This seed grew yeah. over the course of a weekend. Not just because of like... Just not... Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you, yes. basically. Yeah. That's kind of what I learned over this weekend. Yeah. 
wow. Like, I'm un- really spicy, so really good. cool. I also received um, a letter from a wonderful man called... Um, his character name is uh, Lorraine Regen Sophia Thores de Savos. Um, or Goldie, uh, as I like to call him. <laughs> a, a, a league guest chap, um, basically... Because I'm ambassador to Jam, I'm like the and, and Jam is like a and Yam. I've heard both. Oh my god, I'm so frustrated and not knowing which. I will interchange them yes. um, throughout. So yeah. I don't know which one's the right one. Um, but basically, I'm effectively like the conduit between communications between this NPC foreign nation that's mm-hmm. a, and and the Empire, yes. right? Yeah. So anything that's kind of related to them goes through me, and I have to kind of yeah. look after all of that. So um, this guy Goldie uh, has this thing, and it's like a, there's things called ministries, I think they're called, and they're uh-huh. effectively like in character things that you can invest in and get resources out. Sure. In, in this case, it's called the Prime Factor of Palace Docks, and this is like he has this. It's a leagueish thing, I think, and basically he trades with Jean and gets very good rates and kind of access to like large quantities yeah. of resources. So hearing that we're possibly going to go to war with these people and yeah. trade, all trade is going to end, this is like obviously very important to Goldie, okay? It's so cool that the game has these aspects in it. And and this is just player action yeah. as well on top of all of this. But where you have like this fictitious world with these fictitious things, yeah. but there's this immediate economic situation that's occurred yeah, and that makes people interested in what's going on. And it's all... And, and Empire's big enough. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've learned a lot over this last week how big and how much is happening at Empire. And bear yeah. in mind, like for the last two years of us actually attending, yeah. we didn't really get into much main plot, right? No, I think it's safe to say as well, like... It, I haven't even RP'd that much. No, it's very light RP. Very, yeah. very light. Agreed. And I would say yes. this weekend. Much more. Much more. Also, the discovery of who your character is through the act of engaging in some heavier RP. Yeah, definitely. Like, like Talis was basically, for example, always Ian with uh, some dials ever so slightly turned up, right? I, I think it's more like... I would like Gellert to be a certain way. Yeah. But there's enough Dave in Gellert yeah. that means that I yeah. have a couple of tendencies which I will which I've learned about myself, which yeah. is fine. Uh they're a lot of fun, but um can get me into a lot of trouble basically. So yeah. yeah. Um basically uh the reason why I mentioned Goldie at the, at the start is because it's like we it's two characters that have never met before yes. that have common interests. We both want the same thing, right? Yeah. We both want to kind of smooth over diplomatic mm-hmm. relations with Jean mm-hmm. and trying to do different things. So we kind of like, yeah, weirdly like are allied, right? These two like, different forces are in alliance, like an eighties, like oh no, more like a seventies um, diplomatic intrigue movie, yeah. but with two characters yeah. all both wanting the same thing yeah. coming together and yeah. trying to overcome yeah, yeah, the yeah, odds yeah, type yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a really cool fucking yeah. story. And um, yeah, I'm so glad that like uh, I got to hang. Anyway, the um, oh, a couple other bits, things I got for the event. Um, I got braids, mm-hmm. uh, little, uh, what they called, the little black plastic. Yeah, these look really bands. good, actually. Um, a friend, Matty, next door in the Black Scar camp uh, kindly offered to do them. And it was and amazing. Like I felt like a crazy. I must have looked like a crazy person. You looked really time. good, like really good. Um, like because we've both been growing our hair out. Yeah. Um, I really want to do like a, a ponytail kind of thing or something. Yeah. I, this is the first time I've been able to do anything with my hair, yeah. as opposed to just look in the mirror and yeah. go, "When does it start looking good?" Right. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So really, really happy that I could actually do something with my hair, which yeah. was amazing, and I felt so. I felt like. I was sitting there while Matty's doing them and I was mm. just like, what is that feeling? Mm. What is this feeling I've got right now? And I'm like, I'm feeling pampered. Yeah. And I don't, no one pampers me. Oh. It was, do you know what? Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. I really liked being pampered. <laughs> that's something I need to do more of. Yeah. You know? I do, that's, that's, that's one of the joys of, of like going a bit, like not even fancy, but just engaging oh in some God. kind no, of no, idea. No, of like... no, no, no! Don't drag me along on your fucking fancy train. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not having anything to do with that. Um, I ordered a couple of bits. I ordered a uh, a rod, as as oh. custom made oh. rod of uh, Geonosis Studios. Um, this isn't sponsored, by the way, but like we are gonna wax lyrical about this thing. I'm holding it in my hands fun. right now. In fact, and... I should just go through how I basically got it. So. Yeah. Basically, I'm a twat and was walking around, uh, I think it was one of the LARP 
uh, event yeah. things where they have all the salespeople there. Yeah. And I'm walking around. I'm literally telling Ian, like, oh, man, I've become too choosy. Like, yeah. I like this weapon, but I don't want this on it. Yeah. I like this hilt, but I yeah. don't like this. And I'm just like, I want this thing. And then the, the guy, I'm, I'm having this conversation at the Geonosis stand yeah. like an arsehole. I'm literally like saying, this is, all these things are not what I want. And yeah. he just goes, we can do commissions for you. And I'm like, oh, really? So we had a bit of a chin wag. And you know when you're just vibing with someone? Yes. Like, we just... For whatever reason, me and this guy just, I started to describe what I wanted. And what yeah. I wanted was instead of the, I wanted a, a short, shorter weapon I could walk around with comfortably. It's like a town a ta- weapon. Yeah, a town weapon. Yeah. But what I wanted was, I didn't want a blade. I wanted some sort of crystal. Um, mm. So it's a magical weapon. And I wanted the um, the hilt and the guard to be, uh, because I'm a Navarre, I wanted it to be like flower, like, uh, to, sorry, leaves and vines. vines and, of his, uh, yeah. But because I my affiliation with Jam and all that stuff, which yeah. has like a Southeast Asian vibe to it, um, in some ways it's a bit more complicated than that. But um, I wanted flowers on it, and I yeah. wanted it to be colourful and bright type thing. And we just started vibing, and we started to have a chat. And then there's a certain point in the conversation, and I would highly recommend this to anyone that's dealing yeah. with, with any artist. But hmm. communicate know their work no, I like the Genosis stuff anyway I think all of yeah. their stuff is legit like yes. really really nice really, like, really I, I just like the style to it but like um, when we started vibing you can go down that road a certain distance and then at some point you just have to be like it's yours Yeah, I've communicated everything I think I think we're both and this is the limitations of language right yeah. but I think we're both on the same page here yeah. and just let the artist do their thing and I'm so glad that's how it went down it, because uh, holy shit I find there's like that that sort of level of giving the artist the ability to express themselves on the project as well as just not just force it like you know just purely your vision yeah. and have that sort of hammered out it's nice to have the artists kind of touch in there because they really bring things out that you wouldn't have maybe considered that you actually then end up being well, the favorite things why are you going to the artist in the first place yeah. right a lot of people can make latex weapons right but why are you choosing certain people and if the, if that person isn't producing the kind of, if you don't think they're going to produce what you want yeah then don't go through them yeah. but this I, is an incredible thing it's it, it came out so much better in fact i'll just tell this story that like basically yeah. i was supposed to be coming last event yeah all of them got covid i hope yeah. all of them are okay yeah. um so I was more like, hey, COVID, I, I, like, it yeah. sucks that it's not there, but hey, yeah. we yeah. all got to do our thing yeah. nowadays, yeah. right? This time round, um, I popped over just to say hello, and they were like, it hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> yeah. All the stock came along apart from this and maybe yeah. a couple other bits. And I'm like, what? And they said, <laughs> don't worry about it because uh, someone's going to go and pick it up. So over the course of the weekend, I, like I got there Thursday, right? I kept going back and like, no, and kind of having a bit of a joke with the young lady that was working there or the guy that was working there about it. But man, I went on the Saturday. I went, is it here yet? And she said, you're a lot warmer than you've, you ever have been. And I was like, oh, how about now? And I stepped forward and she's like, warmer. And I carried on going. And then I turned the corner and there it was. And it was just like, I couldn't be fucking happier, dude. It's um, it's one of my favorite weapons. It's a showstopper. Yeah. It's an absolute showstopper. I had people coming up to me yeah. and just say, asking yes. about it. And that's, yeah. that, believe me, nothing else about my kit says that. Yeah. Sometimes people say... I like your shell necklace. Like you're talking to like a child that's like, got like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I actually really do like your shell necklace. Well, yeah, but I, I don't know. It's not, it, yeah, people seem to, yeah. Your kind of jangly game actually is something uh, like, um, there's a bunch of players who do it with their kit. And I think actually the layering of having jewelry and sort of jangly I've, stuff on I've, I've, is I really I'm, nice. I'm, you know on, what I mean? I'm on the limit of how much jangle I should have on me at this stage. Maybe, think. maybe. But then you can do stuff around your belt and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, you, on your neck, potentially. It's, it's mainly because my soft kit is pretty plain. I basically wear like a, a, a green top or whatever mm. and some trousers. Oh, that reminds me. I ordered some more stuff of Armour Arena. In, yes, um, yeah. Really good Pakistan. stuff. Really good. I love it. I think like buying straight... I think they're in Pakistan or India, I, I forget. Yeah. Um, but the... Uh, whenever I order a firm, it takes forever to get here because I think they're basically manufacturing it and sending it from half the world away. Yeah. Um, but couldn't be happy with the stuff. I've got some trousers and some other clank. Not that I'm going to be yeah. using clank for my Navarre but character. Lot but man, right, yeah. like, you know, the Dubois must ride again, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's kind of... Um, Oh, and I bought some cavalry boots off. Yes, they're really nice. So they really do nice. leather boots and all this stuff like this, yeah? 
So, but these boots are fucking. They're outrageously cool. Like yeah. I love them, right? Yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. proper cavalry boots. Goes up I to really the knee, like them. Yeah, yeah. leather. Um, I had to put some insoles in and double up on socks. Yeah. But when I'm walking around with them, I felt a little like Bambi at first. Yeah. It was more like learning how to walk so they don't grip your feet like the way that normal shoes do, right? right. So, yeah. It's an important point that I mentioned my footwear and how I'm finding maneuvering around yeah, yeah. It is quite fairly important. But yeah. What else did you get up to before before the event? Okay, there's quite a few little things, but the, the, the biggest thing was uh, that ended up sort of like being a massive part of my game throughout the whole event was uh, becoming... Uh, the uh, captain of the Navarchers uh, for this event because uh, Kaylee, who's played by Antonio, couldn't make it. So I kind of asked, is this something I could do? And basically me and Sparrow will be... Oh, me and Sparrow it's will okay. be um, okay. be like sharing kind of... We'll be sharing kind of... Are you okay, Captainship of we'll it. We'll get to that later, man. I know, I know. Big just, emotions, big feels. We'll get I know, to that. I know, sorry. Though. We'll get to that. Sorry. But um, but yeah, we'd be sharing well, kind that, of sub-captaincy really, of it. That hit you just then, Yeah, it? yeah. Dude, it, it hit me for a while, Wow, actually. man. Um, yeah, well... Uh, yeah. yeah. But no, so uh, I, I was basically the captain for this event, and... Um, so you're going to be in charge of the archer block? Yeah, and it, I, I kind of... I, I, I kind of interacted with a bunch of people and we were all going to meet up and stuff. It worked out really well. And just having that as a as a, an element of game that I was walking into, suddenly, like, actually being in charge of a military unit and, like, a special kind of military unit as well, like an asset, like an a- that, that the commanders can actually think about using. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't aware how much game that brings. Yes. Like, being uh, the captain of an archery block uh, really did bring me a lot more game than I was ready for in a, in a fantastic way. Uh, we had so many moments over this weekend where you were like, oh, and I'm just going to try and chill out for a minute. And yeah. then someone will run over and be like, hi, I'm looking for Talis, yeah. um, the Navarcha captain or whatever, yeah. and all this stuff. And it's just like, it's fucking cool. It's it was really, really cool. cool. It, like, uh, So that's a massive part of my game going into it. There was lots of stuff I wanted to try and do beforehand. And that was a big part of the, of the pre-LARP. Uh, the other thing was there was the... A creation of the market, which was a really cool idea. By the way, it's really funny that yeah. we just add nah to the story. I know, it's a little bit like anything at all. And yeah. Then that's, that's yeah, it. I actually don't mind it. No, I can I see either. why people wouldn't be into I, it. And I think, I think we're at like having the Nabar and the Namarket, I think that's, that's enough. Yes. Yeah, if the, I was the from a is, is if, enough. Dude, right? if I was from a different nation, I would completely take the piss out of it. Yes. And as you a, should as probably as well. I love it. Yeah. It's <laughs> totally cool and I love it. <laughs> Utterly um, efficient. <laughs> I think this idea of setting up an actual market area mm. is such a good idea yeah it's it's like I, I i stopped by and said this to the guys and uh, I, I i donated to the fundraiser for yes, it I'd because yeah. what what being a trader yeah is a pain in the ass especially yeah. when you've got high ticket items and you're just yeah. wandering around and you're trying to hustle and it's just like you're doing miles and miles and miles for very little coinage yeah. you're getting to meet some people but it's you know it's it is what it is right and also it gives like a sense of community that's the and other it, thing i was about to say this like the spectacle of empire yeah to have these special locations yeah. you can go to yeah. and experience and the idea like, that oh uh, i'm gonna go to the market this weekend just to see what they have yes right yeah like really cool it, it was really cool to be part of it because i decided that i was basically going to try and sell a whole bunch of my produce there yeah uh, and you've been a busy I, boy haven't you i really did make a lot of stuff because i've basically Finished is the wrong word, but I've got to a state with my in-character kit for, for Talis himself, where I'm very, very happy. I'm not in any rush to add anything. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think you can at this stage. No. Um, <laughs> Although I did see a really nice goblet that somebody posted up. But anyway, the, um, <laughs> but um, so I was like, oh man, I, I really, really, just for my own mental health at this stage, enjoy making stuff. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's actually become really important to me as a person to just mm-hmm. keep doing stuff keeping myself busy so i was like oh i need some stuff to do i was like yeah then the markets come along there's an opportunity to sell stuff i'd already been making a, a, basically a few new copies of my book the alchemist of d's it's very good <laughs> it's very good other, <laughs> what al- a shilling. other alchemy books are available. yeah other alchemy books are definitely available um, uh but Jesus, like Jesus, i know Jesus, hey always you, be hustling you whore always you be whore. hustling hey you can whore yourself in the field you yeah. can't whore yourself on the podcast. No, that's mate. shameful. That is shameful. I know. I'm that's disgusted. Bad. But I'm... It, they are very, very good. 
so <laughs> no, um, so but worth every penny. <laughs> um, I'd really kind of worked pretty hard on making some of them. I did like this limited edition copy of the book, which is in like a a slip case that you can wear on your your hip, and you or you can use it as like a a book storage thing. And it's like fully like it's like it was nice to sort of sit down and be like, I'm actually going to like push the limit of what I can do. All the because I, I was not like I've ever formally learned how to do any of this stuff. It's just me bodging a lot of it as I go. I think that's how it is though. Right? Oh, that is how it is. But I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to go full out. What would like a fancy limited edition by Talis look like? They're right? great. And I'm I'm dead chuffed with them. They're really nice. Um, and I like how bespoke they are. Yeah, like the way that you change them up. And yeah, how they're they're each so individual and and like I think yeah. I also have kind of lent quite into this kind of idea that like Talis actually makes this stuff. Yeah, right. Like he's I'm kind of like of the mind where he he actually has made his his outfit right. Like large elements of it were made by him. Is one in the library by the way? Yeah, one's in the library. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you can go uh, check that out. So you can go but, check that but out. But you've made the, the covers much more fancy now. These you? these are some really fancy ones. Um but I've just learnt more, right, and I've got a bit better at it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And just wanted to try out some different so I did that. But, but I was talking about this before that it was like sorry I'm gonna get complete sidetracked, yeah. but like preferences are a weird thing, right? Mm. Like you might think that the, the your old batch are like, Well yeah. I've improved so much and done all yeah. this stuff, right? And I was like you were saying like, Oh, I should mark these down in price and these should be more expensive. But I agree, like the fancy ones are more fancy, but like you don't know. Like someone's gonna be like, No, I absolutely love this version of yeah. these books, yeah. right? So I had, I had someone actually come up but that's that's for when we actually get there. But yeah, I had some people come up and say similar sort of stuff. So But yeah, the market it's amazing. amazing cool hey thank you to the players that set it up um, yeah. we haven't spoken to so I won't mention them by name or anything but like they it's that kind of hustle dedication imagination yeah. uh, and, and actually like I love people that do the thing mm. and they've, they've really gone out there they come up with this good idea an objective yeah. and they went out and they achieved it like there's, I think they're trying to go for a stretch goal at the moment it'll be yeah. fucking sweet if they, can get some, if they get benches down there oh they get benches, little stalls. GG, it's like so it's gonna be good. amazing. Also for the bar at night, like mm-hmm. um, having a few benches out. Would they've be really got good. this. Like they've got these <clears throat> lovely lights that basically trail all the way down, and yeah. it's basically all the way from the entrance, basically up to the the market. Yeah, and it makes it this really nice kind of night market. It's as well. lovely. At There's night. these free braziers they've got going. Oh, the fires are great. It's such a good idea. Really they, good. they really nailed it. Yeah, and, really uh, nailed it. And all the community there. Uh, which is really nice people to communicate with online. Yeah, I would and going into the event, I was really well, excited I, about joining I was the talk, market. I see stuff. I was like, "Oh, we should, we should get better friends with them." And I'm like, "We should. Like, we we should. 100% should." I, I see, uh, yeah. they're, they're lovely people as yeah. well. Like that, like actually interacting with them. And I was genuinely a, a big part of what I thought was going to be my game was going to be spending a substantial amount of time in the market, mm. just hanging out with these people who I knew were really cool. Yeah. And I just wanted to kind of just sell some stuff and have that kind of RP essentially a trader RP I thought it would be really good fun that's not how the weekend went nope but it was a lot of fun expectations they'll kick you in the dick Um... also another thing I should say is before uh, the event started like a few days before the event started um, there were like there was basically this message I got from somebody I won't mention who what and it was about this um, meeting between uh, the Spring Art Mage and Yormogra, who's this Eternal, um, which is like uh, these kind of, I guess, is it uh, Eternal? Yeah, well, yeah, I think, or a Herald of Eternal. I'm not entirely I sure. Remember, I think Eternals are the big bads or whatever, the big scary. They're like horses. crazy and gods, the right? Heralds are heralds for Eternals. I yeah, think? maybe, maybe. I'm so uh, sorry. Yeah, you know what hey, you're talking I'm not, about. I'm not in, a pr- in the priest or magic game, right? No, 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 Talis no, no, doesn't no. know anything about. I this. don't want anything to do with Eternals. No. Yeah, they can. Yeah, that's a whole different. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, so basically, and the the message was basically shenanigans might be afoot. Shenanigans. So this kicked off a whole thing. Like the shenanigans that were described to me. Sounded very, very bad. Yeah. Like, very bad. Yeah. And I was like, I had no idea this was going on. Yeah. This requires, you know, a full activation of all things. Yeah. Right? And I was, so I started, like, messing, messaging around, just getting some, like, different opinions on things and stuff like that, trying to gather up stuff uh, I see and sort of learn. This was just all going into the event. Like, in, in a very small amount of time, what are we going to be doing about this? So that was a huge part going into the game. And the other thing I had that was kicking along in the background 
was I, I and I really can't talk about this much at all. So I'm going to talk about it in very vague terms. Uh, you tease. But I and it's the tease. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but I got this. I got involved in this investigation, which was this letter correspondence, and part of it involved breaking an actual code, uh, which like the kind of stuff that like. <laughs> Like it, it, it was like it. Was, I'm not saying it was like James Bond shit. Well, it kind of was. It kind of James. It kind of was, and it was like so cool. I was like, I, I spent a night at home just kind of sitting there, just breaking it, and then I was like, I broke the code. This is what it says, and I posted it back, and it was just really cool. Like that as an element of game. Bear in mind, this is a code. The, the intrigue. This is a code that somebody got on a letter that was written by somebody else. Have we? Okay, this is dumb, right? Yeah. But how have we missed yeah. all the intrigue? Because there's a there's lot. There's a lot. Players do a lot of like, stuff. If you're a player like like we have been, yeah. like you hear about stuff in the distance, but like the sheer volume of intrigue. I think that the reality is you and me hadn't pushed for it until no, now. True. Like we, true. We only just made ourselves accessible to that type of game because you have to you have to sort of it's not even that the game will find you if you make people aware that you would be interested in the game if you kind of understand yeah we've been building the entwined paths up which is our banner yeah and i've been trying to get into the um the the ambassadorial game yeah and i think this is kind of a there culmination. are repercussions for that these right? are culminations of both of those and, and yeah. through the journey of trying to get to those positions or trying to organize those things you end up making a an absolute shitload of contacts yeah. and people that know your name right yeah. like um, people start to recognise you as oh there's that guy that won't shut up about Jam all the time yeah. right yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah it's really cool so that was an awesome little thing so it's just the aspect of as I said someone writes this letter someone else acquires the letter and then that letter has a code on it that then somebody else has to break like that chain of events just even as a human interaction is awesome yeah right but doing all that IC was chef's kiss good. Yeah. Thank you so much to everyone involved in that chain. Bear in mind, I don't even know some of the information about the letter. Uh, but it was really good. Oh, and I'm a, sorry I can't talk in more specifics, everyone. But hopefully you can just get an idea of what that would be like as a human to be involved in something like that. That yeah. hopefully you can understand how cool that was to be part of. Dude, sounds amazing. Sounds it was amazing. great. So that was super cool um, to do. So... Uh, we okay. I mentioned this on the podcast a while ago, and I would I would usually never usually talk about um, listeners or patrons or people like that coming to say hello. Okay, mm. ages ago, I don't even yeah. people remember me talking about how we were blowing up in Kazakhstan. Yeah. Okay. Someone in Kazakhstan is listening to us. Okay? Yes. And then we got a message that we got a patron that was like, "Hey, I'm the person in Kazakhstan." Yes. Just want to say thanks for the, all, all the stuff. Really yeah. nice message. Okay. And I was like, this is, this is fucking amazing, right? Yeah. But I am a skeptical man, Ian. Yeah. I'm a skeptical man. And even when someone says, I'm the person from Kazakhstan and all this stuff, I just, whatever, I just tend to be like... It sounded too good to be true. Exactly. Exactly, Ian. I'm a, I'm a grown-up boy. I've seen the internet. I know how it is, right? Yeah. Like, it's it's actually someone called Jeff who lives in Birmingham. He's using, in like, an IP thing to try and make it... Like, yeah. that's what's happening right now, right? No. This the Kazakhstan listener came to their first event and came to the camp and visited us. Yeah, on the first day when we got there, we yeah. set up camp and it was it first day to, uh, in in large shades can just be summed up as an awesome awesome social event that you engage in with the people that you love. When when Violet arrived and yeah. introduced herself, I, I, how happy was I? Yeah, I, I was in con- I, I couldn't contain how the joy I felt at yeah. how. I'd finally got to meet this person who had lived in my imagination for so long. And I know this sounds very parasocial, by the way, yeah. in the reverse way where a content creator is becoming yeah. a little bit too obsessed by a listener that is in one specific part of the world. But really fucking cool. Yeah. Really nice yeah. to chat to them. Um, here are some nice slippers. Which the slippers were amazing. From, uh, that had horse hair. Um, I think, like, it was great. And they so look amazing. Happy. And yeah, this isn't like, if you're listening, we don't want to be bombarded with gifts or anything. No, like no, definitely. This, def- this is just a really special occasion that yeah. I just wanted to say, as, as, a, as, as someone that's been making the podcast, whatever, a real yeah, privilege to really kind of lovely. meet someone that was awesome in it. person as well. Like, I, I, yeah. I think we just, like, the, everyone who has approached us hey, has yeah, been we should really just talk nice. about this in general yeah you're the best listeners yeah, really you're cool. the fucking best like 
you don't fuck with our game um whenever we have interacted with anyone you're so nice like you're a really attractive bunch you're really fucking polite you're you you, you're just awesome like because it's a worry for us because the problem is like when you go to larp you can end up being like recognized or people change their behavior about you or whatever right like i don't get that feeling at all yeah um so thank you so much like you fucking legends so Um, good yeah really appreciate it um um it it just makes like sometimes i worry about it yeah and when we go to these events i'm like oh no we don't need to worry what the fuck was i worried about? yeah because everyone's just so awesome about it uh and i I think they understand hopefully you know where we are and what we want and it just works really well we will be getting into a lot of stuff over the course of this recording though that is going to be like I think most of the stuff I'm going to talk about is kind of mostly public knowledge, or you could dig a little bit and yeah. find out what I'm about to say. Yeah. I've checked with all the players involved that I'm going to mention by name, yeah. so that's fine. I'm not going to mention any of the stuff, but obviously, don't fuck you with the shit. Yeah. Like, we can keep having fun, but please yeah. don't fuck you with the shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, the other thing that happened when uh, Violet came round was that she spoke about uh, the fact that she was going to be having... Uh, gambling opportunities oh my god and uh that she was also going to be selling bubbles that you can blow bubbles is legit a genius so business i, I immediately there and then decided i only knew that talus had a little bit of a gambling problem oh did you a little uh, bit which is a weird thing to kind of play into but it's kind of good fun i, I do like it how, i do it very jokey i like how you in don't yeah. gamble on anything yeah. like i've never even heard of you betting on something right yeah. like but the idea of like talus being like he just can't fucking help himself yeah. he likes to see he likes to hear the dice yeah. he likes to hear the roulette wheel spin yeah. he likes all of that i was right? legit because uh farron wasn't here uh this event and i was legitimately like oh no that's uh that's talus's gambling buddy uh, like you know, that's who I go and play like high stakes blackjack with, right? <laughs> and it's like did that you, did as you a take thing. Them to the cleaners as well, like did we you... did really well on the blackjack. We did great. Yeah, on the poker. Oh no, no I no, did very no. bad. No, but you played poker with mercenary, an then... entire mercenary company. Yeah. So essentially, they win whatever happens. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but no, it was it was oh, that was that was great. But no, he wasn't here, and I was like, okay, I only knew that Ty Scamble, but bubble blowing. I was like immediately. Talis is going to have a kind of grandma in Las Vegas pulling a slot machine style addiction to bubble blowing. Bubbles and gambling at the same time. Bubbles and gambling at the same time. I was uh, really of the mind. You no, know I like it because it's like, it's like, you know, like you're an alcoholic or something, but yeah. any of the negative connotations to it, you're just a bum- bubble addict yeah. who can't help themselves at yeah. the fucking table, right? Like, it's excuse, so cool. Excuse me, mate. Your, your bubbles are blowing into it and you just turn around and be like, fuck off, I'm gambling here. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> It's like bubbles is everything that I would want as like a little talus effect of like the idea of because they're kind of shiny God, they're and they're fucking flamboyant yeah, and it's outrageous, very showy. Yes, you don't really see yes. them. Oh, God. All the things I was like, oh, this is a must. So I, I, I was like, God, Jesus, the, yeah. And and the fact that I won't like I didn't get to do this during the course of the events of the actual LARP. Is a real. That's my one regret. Oh, that I didn't get to, to do down? this. Well, they were going to. Basically, the idea was uh, uh, she was going to come and sit up stall next to me and literally feed me like a gambling addict. Fuck's sake. Uh, Fuck's sake. Which I really want to do, by the way. I really want to do that. That'd be so much fun. But the, the weekend was so crazy. I, I, as awesome an opportunity to RP as that was. I missed out on it just because it, the weekend was so crazy and there's so much stuff happening. Dude, I had so many things I wanted to do this weekend that I didn't do because of all the things. Let's, let's just we... hop in into Friday proper. Friday, ding, ding, time in, yeah. let's go. Oh my Wowzers. God. Yeah. So you're terrified you're going to get killed. I'm pretty, like, I'm like, if they're, if someone's going to, like, all I want to do is I want to get the winged messenger out. Like, mm. Gillett and me, Dave, yeah. are both pretty invested like I don't want to be the guy that didn't do the thing that caused yeah. like the, the start of World War One. Yeah. okay like because basically uh, just a bit of setup a um, whole bunch of these there's like six major nations and a bunch of smaller ones yeah. um, the Empire is not the biggest nation in the world right there's other, yeah. there's all sorts of things going on and basically the, there was a thing called the Liberty Pact which was uh, signed among um, nations who had made slavery illegal this was basically to uh, a trade deal to make sure that uh, those people trade with each other and uh, mm-hmm. to help each other. 
but also put a uh, embargo um, on every non-slaving nation. Yeah. Um, Jean and us have been trading for hundreds of years, and basically through the course of however many years of yeah. empire players, because nobody likes slavers, right? Um, mm-hmm. Which is a bit more complicated with Jean, but let's not get into it. Yeah. Um, but the uh, basically our, diplomatically, our stuff had got so bad, right? Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to be the you know, just because it's my first weekend on the job and yeah. this is like really important, right? Like, yeah. I still want to do it right. Yeah. So, had my little, I had basically when I got, uh, so when I started, they, they, they get, there's this thing called Wing Messenger and you need mm. free iridescent glooming, which is yeah. a resource. So, you yeah. have to go and source that. Yeah. Um, you have to um, have your letter. I, you have to have the recipient of the letter. So, I knew the guy's name. Yeah. So, at t- and you can't do this before time in. And you okay. need a certain amount of mana as well, right? No, um, one mana of, oh, for okay. the caster, okay. effectively. So right, it's sure. one or two mana, depending on whether and they've um, done something to do with this. And that's another important element to include in this. You, you need a caster as you well. You need a caster. So we've, we're fortunate we've got... Uh, An autumn mage uh, yeah. called Cadigan, yeah. who is an absolute mad lad, who... Yeah. Um, I have a very weird relationship with. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a battle mage, but I don't approve of all of that crazy ritual magic. But it's nuts, but unfortunately... you got a dabble in it. He's very helpful and yeah. very good at what he does. Yeah. So... And he plays like him slightly kind of... Slightly kind of crazy. He's There's a crazy he's element. Completely insane. Yeah. He, well, we think he's insane, but... Yeah. Then all these other like ritual ma- uh, mag- uh, magic people yeah. keep showing up and asking advice and wanting to get into yeah. stuff. So he must be doing something, right? Oh, yeah. Um, well, he hasn't blown himself up yet. But I don't particularly want to know what he's up to because it's probably something wacky and yeah. dangerous and yeah. scary. Um, I, get, I get the impression like uh, Cadigan's like, he's push- like how you're pushing on your element of game. Like, he's pushing on a whole other element of game. He's, yeah. And he's been doing that for a while, actually. Uh, I think more so than most other well, people, been, I would say, in the whole group. He's been one of the most productive yeah, members. I, he, and, but it's really subtly. Yes. Like, um, well, I, I don't think it actually is subtle. I think it's just in a different direction than you and me look often, because we're off doing the other things, right? Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, I, yeah. I think he's been pushing pretty hard on in a whole bunch of different angles for a while. And, and it shows, and it's great. It's awesome to RP around. And I really actually enjoyed... There's this weird thing I have. I enjoy the observation of other people like almost the voyeurism of watching other pairings of characters meet up and interact yeah and like to listen to them and watch them it's awesome dude me and you love narrative right we love all of that stuff like the idea of chalk and cheese characters meeting and having to work together is really cool watching Cadigan and uh, Gellert work together and then there's a couple of these that I'll bring up during the course of the thing it really is awesome I think I think uh uh, Cadigan and um, and Gellert actually do get very we very much really respect each other in a way but like uh, how we do our what we do is a yeah. mystery to each other but yeah. you know we, yeah it's good yeah, it's anyway, really cool so basically at time in uh, I'm like I need to fucking I need to get this done right yeah. so I basically and you can't this is really annoying by the way I don't know whether PD can think of a better way to do this but I can't I have to go down to God hand in my resources, right? Yeah. And then use their computers, which are like, I hate to sound like a computer snob, okay? But I can type 60 words a minute on a decent keyboard. The keyboards were like, just they're taking a fucking beating, dude. Like yeah. this computer, like neither taking out back and, and putting out of its misery, right? Yeah. But so writing it out in a noisy environment, it's for, I'm dyslexic, so it's kind of hard to concentrate. I think that's a whole other element to it, being dyslexic. Actually, there's, yeah, there this are... is all very what, dyslexic world problems, by the yeah, way. Yeah. So if I sound like a little salty about this, it's only because I, I find it so difficult to do, yeah. right? And it's also like, at time in, like, time is important, right? Like, yeah. you want to get everything done, especially when you're having majors standing by and all the rest of it. Um, you don't want to spend loads of time in an OC environment trying to get something sorted. So I open up the thing, okay? It tells me... I hand in my iridescent gloaming. I say yeah. I want to cast a wing messenger. Then I go to the computer. I log in. I um, I type it in. But then it's yeah. like got the person who it's addressed to, which I know. Yeah. And it has location of person. Mm. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. This didn't come up in anything I've read about where this person is. Like, can I just put Jean or, or do I need to, or Jan? Do I need to put like a specific, a specific location? Or something? Yeah. And the way that the wing messenger is written is like, be specific yeah if you are not specific bad things will happen okay these words are like how you trigger dyslexic people by the way like 
I like let me put it this way like the visa thing remember I went yeah. through and all of that stuff like I'm terrified about fucking up forms at this stage right um, but- I have a whole thing about I really feel uncomfortable watch, having people watch me write yes makes me genuinely uncomfortable uh, uh, it's one of the most stressful things out. in my life I had to hand write stuff out towards the end of this event yeah. and all of that stuff because of I had to send another one it fucking nightmare anyway when I got there um there was a lot of confusion over who I was. I didn't really understand what the confusion was, but I got taken away by a member of the crew, and then he had to talk to some of the plot crew. Um, and there's just a lot of confusion. Uh, it took a really long time. I really appreciate the people that helped me out, but yeah. it, it was like a bit of a palaver just to get to this stuff and get it actually sent and sorted. And mm. I was pretty anxious about it, especially with the context of if I don't send a letter. Yeah terrible things will happen yeah. and my, uh, yeah there's a lot of stuff going on a lot like, of stuff going yeah. on with it um anyway after about i got to the thing at at time before time in and was ready and it, i was at least until it took 45 minutes yeah for me to get through this process and yeah. it was like man it was like oh god anyway managed to get back standings going on yeah and uh so basically we have to get hold of a referee and then so referee kindly came along and then we do a little ritual um, to send the thing, which yeah. was hilarious. Um, I wasn't there for the ritual as well. I really wanted to actually be there Did you see the second one on I Sunday. saw the second one, yeah. I was, it was very similar to that. It was like basically... So the idea is... Um, uh, Cadigan like sets up the thing. So we get the referee. Um, it gives me a ritual number. Yeah. I have to pay the manor. Explain yeah. what we're doing. Explain what's happening. Referee's yeah. like, I'm down. Checks on the little pad goes okay cool so i've got your ritual here you're doing this here's the crystal manor you have to do the the ritual so cadigan starts firing the, up the old uh, up ritual the engines, machine yeah. yeah 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 and it's like he's talking about how uh this letter is important it needs to be sent it's being sent by gellert ashborn to this yeah. guy in jam and we're doing all this processing he says right we want like a big an eagle is going to come and come down and <laughs> take the letter <laughs> and amazing. wing it away to jam and he says oh can you hear that Gellert? can you hear the wings beating and i'm like i can i can and then then he like i, I close my eyes and when i open them again he's got this like little uh toy duck yeah uh, like a little duck model yeah and i'm like he's like oh I wanted a, I wanted an eagle, and I got this duck, and I'm like, I quite like the duck. And then um, he's like talking to the duck, and he says, "Oh, the duck's name's Diablo, and <laughs> Diablo the duck." Yeah. And I'm like, I love Diablo, yeah. and it's just like Diablo's probably not going to fly most of the way. He's probably going to waddle. He's a yeah. duck. Do you know what I mean? Like he's, he's going to uh, do like a speed wiggle swim. Yeah, he might catch a ride on a yeah. on a wagon, maybe. Sea turtles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Diablo winged his way off to Jarm, and uh, basically. You need the fizz rep of the letter and all that stuff. So, um, what's it called though? Like, yeah, I like I like doing. I'm still like, I'm still unsure about ritual magic. This is OC. I'm still unsure about like whether it's something part of the game I want to interact with. Mm. But it's really fun watching. But basically, dude, watching people RPing yes. and really like doing, trying their hardest to try and make it an entertaining, fun thing for everyone involved yeah. is like, I just love it. It's, I it's love cool. being involved in a ritual. Yeah, and, or, or I don't know if I would want to lead a ritual. Although having said that. There's some things like maybe, that, yeah, it's intriguing. Maybe, like, like for example, being the leaf man at the player event yeah. was kind of like being in a ritual, right? Because I was kind of like putting a performance on and stuff like that. That what was about, kind of cool. What about some cool like like night magic stuff where you can like yeah. start acting like you're being like possessed by another thing and speaking like tongues and other things? Like yeah. I, I can, don't know, all I, kinds of crazy stuff. I like. can see it being yeah. really fun. Oh so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I love being a participant. Um, yeah. Yeah. Why don't we go through some of your stuff, Ian? Because uh, I. Yeah, so uh, while you were standing, uh, one of the things I was, I was kind of excited, nervous, all the emotions for, I'm not a public speaker uh, in any way, that's not what, normally what I do. So you went to speak at standing? Yeah, so I went to speak at standing. Fucking hell, you must have been... I was yeah. really nervous How about it. How much big public speaking have you done at None. Ever? None, ever. Right? I've never spoken publicly. I, I like lead small tour groups occasionally at the library, which it's is very different. It's a lot though, right? Yeah, you have to wait there, and then the nerves yeah, you're get... in a little queue, and you kind of go up, and then it's your turn. And the thing is, as well, like Talis is still me, right? He's still a, a bit shyer, like me, a bit more reserved, like me, maybe. But he's also a little bit more extra than I me, think right? You need to find a different word from reservedy, and it doesn't yeah. quite sum up. Yeah, I know, I know what you're saying, but you know, there's, a, there's <laughs> the element of, uh, but so, but Talis is not entirely like that. He's a bit more kind of outgoing, a bit more. Uh, yeah. you know uh, forward facing than I am 
so I'm kind of nervous about oh, am I going to be able to sell that a little bit? Like I would want to do a proper introduction. I don't want to just be like hi, I'm Talis. Fucking captain of the Navari, yeah. right? Like you got to yeah, okay. Of the Navarches, yeah, yeah. Navarches, sorry. How'd it go? So yeah, I stepped up and did it, and everyone was really cool. Like people actually kind of like cheered me and stuff, and like you know, kind of acknowledged, like knew who I was, which was like actually. It was like just having people like yeah, in a big you, circle. You know, you're saying that you're actually kind of a big deal. No, no, that's Is that not what even you it. just said just then. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'll have to so go back bad. and listen to it, but I'm pretty sure, I'm paraphrasing. No. I'm pretty sure you just said, I'm kind of a big deal around here now. <laughs> but it was... People know me, you know? Like. But the, the reality people is... People cheer me. The reality... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I feel so dirty. Yeah, yeah. You have a way of just, like, cutting through to, like, the... <laughs> it's, it's good. No, but so... Um, I've never in my real life... Maybe, like, playing football and scoring a goal or something like that when people kind of are, like, actually acknowledging you in, like, some kind of capacity. Mm. Like, I don't have people in a big circle who will mention my name and say, Ian! Right, that doesn't happen. The, and there was these people calling out Talis. It dude, was awesome. That moment where you're next in line, yeah. and there's no one standing in front of you, so you can just watch the person in front of you, probably killing it, by the yeah. way, with whatever they're saying. Yes. And then there's that moment where you break through the threshold to step yeah. into the yeah. circle, and then it's like quiet because everyone's yeah. waiting for you to go. And it's those, it might last half a second, but yeah. like that is a terrifying, whatever that moment is, that's when things. Then you have to open your mouth yeah. and hope that you don't go, Hi, my name's Talis. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> you know what? I, I, I weirdly hadn't thought about it that much. Uh, but I think the fact that in the previous event, I'd gone for that boss seat and I'd suddenly found myself thrust into a situation where in front of the circle, people ask you questions and you have to answer them. Right, that, which is something, again, I have never done. Uh, well, but because I'd done that and it, oh, I didn't do amazing but I kind of did okay but then I think that made me a lot more like because I was already like oh that's the most difficult thing mm. that I've done and that's a lot more difficult than making an announcement right uh, so that worked really well dude, I was really tough with it dude, everyone was what awesome. you're talking about is why LARP is so fucking yes. good like even your failures because it's LARP if, you, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're smart and you yeah. kind of like have that kind of like emotional understanding where yeah bleed is a thing but like we'll talk about this over the weekend but like you did the thing. Yeah. You learn that it isn't that scary and that you can do it. Yeah. Like when I talk to you, um, and I think a lot of other people, and they would actually just meet you, like you're a massive people person. Yeah. Like this, what you do, you love chatting to people and making friends and all this stuff like this. Like this. you have all the skills yeah. without actually putting it towards that one thing, which is public speaking. I think yeah. you just, it's, it's so obvious that you'll be good at it. Yeah. Right, like, um, but you, you, like, you have to kind of go through that journey. Yeah, of, I think I, for me, there's like, a, there's, there's a little bit of a mental battle that takes place yeah, before time. Course. I think I also have this whole thing, and I kind of been sort of working over it going into the event a fair bit. Of like, I'm actually alright at talking to people, but one thing I really struggle with is weirdly just introducing myself to somebody. Mm -hmm. I find very difficult. Uh, so that was one of the main things I want to do this event. And I want to do it more next event. It's like something I genuinely want to improve on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so having this position obviously gave me that opportunity. And that was really cool. So you already are, really. Yeah. I would say, like, yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry, it was it was awesome. So walking around and just like uh, announcing that, uh, and then we also learnt at the standing that uh, there was a Valorn heart that was potentially exposed oh, in the Afrofem. Now the Valorn are like the the mega evil that Navari hate and will literally like slay their entire nation to try and destroy um they are the greatest spiritual threat to the empire yeah so they, they, it must be destroyed must at all costs at all costs uh so uh but so to learn that a, a valorn heart it which is like the the as it sounds the heart of the kind of bad thing in the region that it's in it was exposed and potentially we could attack it and we knew how strong it was and that meant that it wasn't so strong that it would be like an impossible task, right? Which I think a lot of people thought, because we've never had a chance to go for a Valorn Heart before. And the last one that did get destroyed yeah. wrecked yeah. everything around it. Like, yeah. it destroyed everything. So yeah. there's a bit of fear about... Yeah, this hasn't been done for a while, right? I think people were expecting very, very, very big numbers. Uh, like, But actually, PD have done, been quite canny, I think, and made it made it accessible. Okay, made yeah. it a little bit tantalizing. Oh, no. Made it a little bit spicy. That you need a, a you need a, you need enough. It's right? an Andy Raff trap. It is. It is. 
but it's like you need a lot of stuff. But you could get it done if you if you are you going to hustle. I mean, you came here to hustle this weekend, so yeah, of course you're going to hustle. Yeah, so you're going to hustle together a whole bunch. So basically, we, we learned that we needed 150 uh, military units to go be dedicated to this thing. That it? Yeah. To that's to do the initial thing, and then I think that will give the possibility, Whoa. maybe even of having a conjunction. Would be amazing. A conjunction Whoa. to have the heroes of the Empire go and deal the death blow to the heart of the Vlorn. Oh I don't know if that God. this is that's me spitballing that, but that would be ridiculous, right? Oh man, I need to get down the gym, dude. I need to be made of iron by the time we have an opportunity. Like <laughs> that'd be so to... good. So that was outrageously cool to have like announced at standing. I'd heard a little bit about it before a time in, but to hear about that was very spicy. Uh, and that was all done through a spy network that we had over there, basically. Uh, and that was really cool. Um, so then straight from standing, we go to Fawn's Council. These things, that's the other thing. These things are all that I'm going to describe now are all like bam, 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 right? One after the other. Yeah, there's, it's there's a lot I'm doing while this is happening, by the yeah. way. Yeah, it's the same. But let's keep exactly. going. Let's keep going. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, it's basically Fawn's, it's Fawn's Council and they need a new speaker there. Yeah, it's Fawn's are, are military units effectively. Like there yeah, are you don't fighty, have to fight to be a Fawn. but boys and girls yeah. who go off and uh, wreck face, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they're generally pe- the, the people who go out and do the fighting. Yes. In the, in the main. Yeah. Um, so we had like a, uh, uh, basically an election for a new voice of the Fawns, essentially. Big deal. Big deal. Big deal. And it was like... Uh, Basically, Caro goes forward for it. He's he's a member of our group, and we're a big fan. Yeah, huge, uh, fan. huge fan of Robert. I mean, yeah, huge. Robert as a as a human being, just yeah. ridiculous. But um, and and on top of this, like Robert had been like properly busy with all kinds of OC stuff going into this event. Yeah, because we've really he he really wants to push, and, and, and really, we really want to push for him being the general of the potential new army. Right, definitely. Yeah, but. I mean, that's and and there's so many good candidates for that position as well. Yeah, and what's what's it, hard is. When there are other good candidates to be the person mm-hmm. that will say, no, I have just as much right to stand yes. and I will. Yeah. And like, like, I, like I've talked to him a lot about this. I don't think I'm talking out of school on this. It's just like, you know, you deserve this, but like, go yeah. get it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, go get it. And, and it's just like, and he really came into his own this weekend. Because he, he had a lot of ground to make up because he's re- really, he's had like full on OC stuff going on yeah, for a while. Vol- he's volunteering, doing yeah. weapons check as well, which takes yeah. a lot of his time away. Anyway. So, yeah. So he, he basically, he goes up for speaker, which is a, a good sort of thing to get, I think, if you're going to be looking at potentially pushing those kind of positions. Because yeah. you, you really want to be speaking at Fawns Council. It's a hat. Yeah. It's an important role. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so potentially that might be. But it's anyway. It's not a hat, by the way. But No, like, but I mean, it's a thing. Like it, a little hat, a, right? Yeah. Like a, yeah. And, um, yeah, so he got he got speaker and that was awesome. It was just like a really cool moment for dude, us as a group. To, dude, when you hear about your friends and associates or whatever yeah. doing well. Yes. It feels amazing. Incredible. I feel amazing yeah. to hear that he got that position. Yeah. And I was so, pr- like, so proud of him. Yeah. So proud yeah, of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, dude. Right? Like, like, properly um, proud. Just like, dude, like it fucking... Yeah. Look at you, you yeah. fucking beasts. Do you know what I mean? And like, I think, you're fucking doing it. Like, uh, that one, that thing we were talking about earlier of us actually not RPing that hard and not necessarily pushing that hard on a whole bunch of game objectives. Mm-hmm. I felt that one really cool backdrop to all this is that our entire group of Stridings and uh, Steadings members who are part of the Entwined Paths, everyone was really pushing on a whole bunch of different ways of playing the game but yeah. they were all pushing yeah. and, and it was like I was really proud of everyone Yeah, like we were like really like we're not big whoop right like we really aren't big whoop uh, but like we're, we're, we're really trying to give it a go now and I'm re- they're really chuffed with everybody yeah, really really cool Yeah. Uh, so after that though straight after Fawn's Council uh, which also basically has a whole bunch of really interesting meetings about military stuff in it but It'd be too too specific to go over, so we'll skip on to national training, which comes afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I'd kind of been in touch with the organisers of national training. I was like, let's bring the Navarches along, and we can work together. And they were really nice. keen on that. Nice, that's a really so, good idea. Um, and th- th- they'd kind of been in touch as well because they wanted so, to have people that give people the experience, but getting shot at so and also you, fighting. Archers. Are you trying to come up with tactics of how you can use infantry and archers at the same time? Yeah, I mean that's already part of what we're trying to do as an Avarches. I mean, like, w- one of the really cool things is uh, that was the main objective, I think, when, when uh, Kaylee built the Navarches. Mm. But the thing, that the, the greatest byproduct of it is uh, the, the camaraderie that comes out of it. 
the fact that we have a natural body system, which we kind of means that as an archer, you're just you're not suddenly playing that solo game. You have someone else that you're working with. Yeah. We we work very much on like a each two can ba- or two or three can basically talk to the other two and three, and we can kind of shift along the line but like that for an infantry line. They're effectively heavy fire support, right? Like I mean, yeah. when you can bring them down onto one focused area, yes. it's devastating, right? Like it, it, um, a bunch. We'll get into the battles later, yes, but yes, what, what, that part of that's all about the sort of the, the I guess the doctrinal way that I'm trying to get the Navarchers to work, and I think we've trying to I, been I pushing for a little while. I know the uh, marches do some sort of national training. Yeah. We do. I'm sure other nations do. I think it's I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, it's just um, build some confidence. Up. Yeah. And it, 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 it almost doesn't matter how effective it is, but just because it gets people doing the thing, interacting with people, and doing you, the you thing. Can build bonds and you build bonds people, that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, think there's yeah, often times, yeah. you know, you'll fight alongside someone, for example, and that is suddenly a really good friend. Yeah. Like that, that person is, is a really good friend. Yeah, I love, really making, I love making little random homies yeah. when you're just like, and then you just give them a little nod when you see them around yeah. for the rest of it. It's cool. It yeah, was cool yeah. fighting alongside you. You know, yeah, thank yeah. you for that moment. That yeah. was really cool. Yeah, you, yeah so. You fight good, yeah. National training was great, really well well run. Also, as part of that, there's uh, some uh, players who have actual archery experience that far outstrips my own, which is very much a, a hobbyist archer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they came along to the end of National Striding and were just offering general archery advice and kind of support and stuff. It was really cool. Like, what a lovely kind of thing to have built into the whole beginning of the game uh and that kind of set up this whole cascade that will then go throughout the rest of the event which was just the navarchers were involved in stuff and thus i was by necessity involved in stuff yeah and that was amazing like to have people come and and like ask for you and to give you intel and for you to go and send people to gather intel and to go and yourself and get intel and to like be involved in things as a result of all that was awesome yes i like really really good like the best game i've had i think um with that in mind yes um i go and do my win messenger come yes. back uh do the actual ritual yeah goldie shows up uh he comes with a bottle of mead in hand Amazing. and some bickies and i was just like little little not biscuits but little gift I'm like that's that's how you fucking that's how you that's how you roll yeah that's how you roll yeah. like I already liked the guy before that but if you bring me booze oh yeah. my god like yeah we're already a big fan but the re- really annoying thing about it was so he rocks up well, I was supposed to have this meeting he was yeah. going to come along and we're going to have this chat about stuff wing messenger took forever obviously come back everything's kicking off someone comes running out to me when I'm waiting for the referee to shop and just goes where's the ambassador to Jean right and I'm like. I'm the ambassador to Jean, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, God, like, there are two Jean-ish citizens walking around Anvil right now. And I'm right. like, you what? And I'm like, yeah, they just, they, they, they're they asking around and trying to do some sort of trade or something. And I'm like, i got to fucking, i got to meet them. So, like, smash out the ritual, right? Like, and then I'm just like, Goldie, I'm really sorry, but we have to go and do this. Like, do you want to come? Because, like, yeah. we've got interest in Jean, in Jean as, well. as well. Right. So let's go. So, uh... I uh, I take along um, uh, Win, who's played by Paige. Yes, who's and she's just a colossal badass. We'll talk about how badass she is. Yes. But like holy fuck, she's awesome. Uh, but then and Bungle, who plays Keys, yeah. who's like my homie. Um, they basically come along to kind of like just make sure that nothing bad happens. Yeah. Like so, all of this is the start of escalation. Okay, yeah. all of this is how things will escalate. But like, so I go down there with a few tooled up Navari, right? Yeah find these uh yarn people running around and i'm like introduce myself and i'm like hello citizens i hear you're from yarn or whatever and they're like yeah and it's just like well i'm actually the ambassador to yarn i just wanted to welcome you yeah to uh to Ironville. just ask you why you're here yeah they were shady as shit they <laughs> were so shady they were right. like we're traders we're here doing some trades and i'd heard like they started off in dawn and they finished their trading and business in the leak right and i was like oh what are you trading here for and bloody blah and doing all this stuff right and i'm like whatever they're doing it's bad right right like it is not good so i don't have the right to like put these people in irons and send them down right like, yeah. i can do anything like this it will cause a diplomatic incident they're not actually official 
officials of Jean, but they do work for a l- yeah. anyway. Yeah. Shady. But then I hear that there's this group in the league that were the last people that seen trading with them and seem to be successful. Yeah. And this group specializes in uh, curses. Right. And I'm like, holy guacamole. Yeah. This is what a diplomatic incident looks like. Yeah. Right. right, like, right, right. I must find out more information. So basically, came up a conversation. It was like, well, some, not all curses are illegal. Yeah. Okay, they're legal. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, we better get down to the, I want to go and speak to a magistrate. Right. And just make sure that I'm not going to go and kick in some doors and give people shit if, uh, if, if what they're doing is perfectly legal, right? Yeah, There's yeah, also yeah. weird stuff about like casting rituals. Some rituals are some some rituals and curses are legal. Some of them aren't. Some of them aren't legal if you put them on an imperial citizen. But if you put yeah. them on a non-imperial citizen, that doesn't necessarily yeah. work. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. Please yeah. don't take anything I say because I'm an idiot. I don't know anything about the law. But this is my understanding of it. So I went down to speak to the magistrates where all the militia will hang out. Yeah. I give them a brief overview on what is happening. Yeah. And they're like, well, it all depends on this. And they give me this advice. And it was like, well, I'm going to go down there and see if I can find anything. And it was like, did you want uh, a couple of militia guys to go with you? And I'm like, yeah, but like, give me some good people. And one of them was like, how about this guy? And then he goes, oh, I can't. I'm actually involved with that specific group. Amazing. So one, legit saying I'm involved in that group. Two... God, the militia are leaky, though. Yeah. Like, you... It's really, like, very, like... Like, he's, he could immediately run off and tell them. Immediately. Immediately. So, then... Mind you, it's cool. It's also really cool RP that you didn't take amazing. the contract. All this, yeah. So, so I get... It's very leaky. It's cool. I get a couple of militia people. I say to them as we're walking along, I'm like, hey, why don't you uh, tuck your whites in so it's not too obvious what you are, right? Like, yeah. the, uh, the militia carry, like, white, like... Sashes. Sashes. Yeah. So I was like, why don't you tuck those in while we're going around? Anyway, ask a few questions. Weirdly, with yeah. a whole bunch of heavily armed Navarre and some militia people, we can't find this group. No one's seen them. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. Weird. Funny that. that. Weird how that happened. Because, yeah. you know, when you walk up there, all heavily armed and looking like yeah. you're about to... And bear in mind, the Navarre reputation is pretty fierce, right? Yeah. Like, if you see a group of heavily armed Navarre approaching you... Yeah. most nations probably wouldn't think that's a good thing right yeah, like yeah. so we walk around it's like fine i can't find them i end up bumping into the ambassador to the commonwealth who's really fun cool yeah. um we had a sit down had a little bit of a chat about it i basically explained that there were some jami citizens here we talked about potentially that they might be trying to do a curse on the commonwealth for example potentially that's yeah. what i would potentially that's what i, I surmised um and basically i was kind of thinking these people are from the League. Yeah. Um, I'm not the ambassador of the Commonwealth. I've yeah. passed on the information to the ambassador of the Commonwealth. Kind yeah. of their problem now. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Right? I'm done with the whole thing. Right. I don't... Add that... Yeah. Yeah. From that point of view, I'm like, I'm no longer interested in... Yeah, it all sounds very worrying to me. with a, a group that specializes in curses in the League, for example. Hindsight is 2020, Dave. Hindsight but I would say, I would say that does sound, described that way, very troubling. Yes. Like, I'm surprised you thought that was the end of it. Well... I can see how that happens. From my point of view... Yeah. I didn't want to carry on the investigation anymore, basically. Yeah. I was done. Um, so... Yeah, and then oh, do you want to talk about you setting up the Navar the, the, the market actually before I get into the rest of it? Yeah, so I think uh, while all that was going on, uh, and this is the other thing, we really didn't spend that much time together. <laughs> no, I barely saw you for the whole. I weekend. hardly saw you at all. Yeah, uh, and we purposefully, although it kind of we it, things leak out because we're so excited, but we purposely try and avoid talking about the event. Uh, it's a real pain in the ass not yeah. talking to you about things yes. because you're my best mate yes. and not I'm talking so ex- to you about really fun things that's happening in my life is yes. very challenging So, but we, that's what we do we, that's what we do yeah. that's what we sacrifice for you <laughs> no but um, no it's great it's great like, I love it. like the build up but dude we wouldn't get to sit down for like two or three hours no. and just talk it through no. we probably would actually that's not true we probably did, would do that but yeah. like it's nice that we have to it's, get a focus with a microphone on it right it is really cool um, it, it, but so um, one of the Big aspects of that was because I was also wanted to be in the market. Uh, although it ended up being mainly being the Nabarcha stuff. Part of it was that I just wanted to spend a fair bit of time in the market selling things. I made ba- basically this uh, sort of rollout display that I could kind of put down that was all like stenciled 
kind of Ashbourne alchemy and I made like a whole bunch of these kind of uh, potion holders that you can put on your hip. I already have a big stock Dude, of potions. It, your shit is so good. Yeah. All your little crafty like potion bottles and all that stuff like that. Like yeah. that's what you know what I mean? Like you imagine a bunch of uh LARPers like looking through a magazine going, yeah. oh, look at that. Oh that's basically Ian's stock that they're looking at. Right. Yeah. Like it's the potion thing I'm, I'm really like I am, I am genuinely proud of it. Um and it's good fun to make. Like I really enjoy it. Um, I had to buy one of those off you actually yeah but I do because I do all these different kind of again I like doing it like they're not just complete clones of one another they're like different colours they're really individual and sparkly yeah 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 (laughs) it's very Talis right oh I'm going to make one's red this time why not add some uh, glitter to that yeah Um, Yeah, I've got like a uh, like a glittery book Oh, it's, it's I ridiculous. I need to speak to the Echo Course about you. Um, um, so, but yes, yeah, setting up the market was really cool and I got to set it up alongside, I haven't actually asked them if it's okay to talk about them, So, but uh, some really cool uh, other uh, Navari who basically let me set up a stall next to them. I was right next to Embercast as well, yeah. who were really, like, really cool. There's also this kind of, uh, I guess, like a tree stump mm-hmm. that actually happens to be surrounded by all this stuff that makes it look like a, a natural throne. Yeah. Uh, and they're like that. That's but like between us. Yeah. So it's like between me and where I'm set up and where Embercast are, and it's a really cool little feature because people literally can come along and sit Dude, on that it. That whole end of the camp. Unfortunately, the way that the camp planners have put it, it's right near the back, and yeah. it's kind of unfortunate. It's on Murder Alley. Yeah. But you know what? Pride in Murder Alley. Yeah. Like, it's still fun. I still love that people yeah. are a little scared about heading down Murder Alley. It's it's good. I love it. Yeah, yeah. But hey, it's definitely worth a trip. Take a few of your well armed people with you. Head down <laughs> Murder Alley. Go on and have do, some fun. Get some commerce under you. Get prosperity. The market was really beautifully set up. Yeah. And just being part of the community, even though I was really, I think, genuinely not I actually went, there I very long. There, I went there for drinks later on. Yeah. And it was lovely. It's really, it was really nice. nice. And we just had a whole bunch of different nations actually. Yeah. There. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely want to spend a lot more time there next time. It was just so busy this time um so yeah so i deal with my jamish citizens mm-hmm. militia i inadvertently might have acted a bit verbose in um my actions yes. um so <laughs> so i have to basically there's a diplomatic meeting in the evening yeah. after senate i have to go and pick up my diplomatic pack um, which is basically, I get it from the hub area, and it's basically like, I've got it here actually. Yeah. It's a, um, this she says at the top, Ambassador to Jean, and it basically tells me a few bits of inf- key bits of information. Yeah. Now, most people's diplomatic stuff is actually more, quite a lot. Yeah. On mine, it's quite big font, and it's only half a page, which right. is basically send the fucking message or something terrible is going to happen. Yeah. And then there's like a little bit, it actually, it's cool. It basically says like, you are under no obligation to share this piece of information with anybody. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. Like it's entirely up to you what you do with it. And I love this. It's a way. really cool element there's of the game. A, there's an element of trust. If yeah. you wanted to be an abusive ambassador, I'm sure there's ways you could yeah, do yeah. it. But um, basically, there's this guy called Lord Minister Anton Tresher, and he's like their advisor or or like yes. political like your diplomatic John, advice. Basically. Yeah, exactly. So basically, he gave a piece of advice, which was that we. Um, I'm going to go into this quite a lot. A lot of this is done, by the way, so I'm not really going to talk about active plot necessarily, yes. but it might give context to stuff later on. I'm, I, what I really want to do with this is is really go into detail of what it's like wearing a fucking hat in the diplomatic thing, okay? So yeah. I'm going to go into some details on a few bits and pieces. Um, most of it's common knowledge, but yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go into it. Anyway, um, basically, this is what it says, okay? This is advice from this guy. It says... The Imperial Senate must pass a motion stating explicitly that they do not uh, support the Commonwealth, which is the nation that that they are potentially going to go to war with, that are Liberty Pact signers, um, in their unlawful war. I know, this is the, when you read it to me, this was the troubling word. Against the principal jams. Or their neighbours. Yeah. Okay, so there's, in one sentence, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And there was talks about this being a demand, when it's not, it's advice, and a whole bunch of stuff, right? But this, this, this whole sentence yeah dominates my weekend yes. okay like it's so going on anyway oh before this really important i should mention before this i have a group of players i'm not going to mention who they are or what nation they're with or anything yeah. description about them i will only refer to them as my watchers or the watchers and yeah. they are a group who i've made friends with yeah they work in 
intelligence circles. They uh, they yeah. hunt um, they hunt baddies in the empire yeah. basically and bring them to justice. And, and are effective. They're, they're extremely effective. Think of them almost like a spy network. Like yeah. they, they feel very like covert. Yeah. Effective. There's so many um, different wings of it as well, which yeah. is really interesting. And I always joke with their kind of like leader guy. Like he's always like he's always like. I'm always watching you, Gellert. I'm always watching you. And I'm like, yeah. well, I always find it deeply comforting yeah. that you are always watching me. Yeah. And it's like someone else is like, or or I could be watching yeah. you or whatever. Like, yeah. I'm sure I'm being tailed at yeah. points by this group, right? Yeah. And they're that good that I have no idea they're there. I think it's really cool that they're just, just as a thing, and there's so many aspects of Ben Parler that are like this, but I just love the fact that that, is a thing that exists. Yes. Right? That players take that on because it's an amazingly fun game. Dude, I love them. But I absolutely love them. It's the same as like ritual magic. It's the same as like deciding you're going to be a trader, all these things. Like yeah. the fact that people make these decisions and make really interesting game around the concepts yeah. of those decisions. We, we, it's really funny how like Gellert's clean. Yeah. But like I'm surrounded by grey people. Yeah. Right? Like it's kind of fun. Anyway, they came up to me and said to me like, We've heard reliably yeah. that there that there's gonna that, that someone's put a hit out on you. Yeah. Or and you're gonna be cursed yeah. over this weekend. Yeah. And I'm like, how reliable is this? And the guy's like, pretty fucking reliable from what I hear. Yeah. So like take precautions. Yeah. And this just sends me from the from the little seed we planted yeah. earlier on in the episode, yeah. it yeah. has now poured a healthy amount of paranoia on this plant and it is now growing like Jumanji. An exponential rate. Like it is uh, Jumanji. Like Akira style. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a big plant at this stage. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck. Like, yeah. oh shit. Like I'm a mix between excited, mm. terrified, nervous. So I basically go to my group and I'm just like, hey, by the way, like there might potentially be an assassination attempt put out against me or a curse. Yeah. I'm going to need some people just to be with me like just to try and give it like you know if i'm by myself it's an easy stand dunk but i want to make it like difficult and and yeah. so basically from then on keys bungle uh, the same person but and um and win um both basically took on being my bodyguards yes so uh bung i'm just gonna call bung bung because i find it easier bungle was like basically became like my man yeah. Right. Like, uh, I don't know how to describe this without making it sound like bad, but like, Bung was the guy who, when everything's kicking off and those things yeah. are happening, I need, I need this one thing done. I go to Bung. Like, yeah. I need this. Yeah. Can you sort this out? And it's yeah. just like it's done. And it's like I know it's done. I can forget about it and yeah. move on. Right. And whereas Win was like yeah. diehard badass fawn who yeah. wasn't gonna let anything happen to me. Constantly at your side. She was like a terrier, right? Yeah. Like, like literally on me, on me. Yeah. Like she, like, um, just I, yeah, amazing. Ready so, to lay down any time. Right? Yes. So, um, who else did we take? We took, uh, we took Fang along as oh, well. Yeah, Fang, Fang's really cool. Fang's awesome. You came along. Yeah, I came along. Um, so basically, we head down and we're waiting outside the gate. I get my diplomatic stuff, <laughs> and we're talking about like, is this on the Saturday or the Sunday? This is either day. Oh, it might have been the Sunday. I'll talk about it now anyway. But we're all standing outside, and then, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it is the Friday because uh, yeah. you were going to go into the, the, the balcony bit that yeah. the, 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 was over the yeah. Senate. And we're talking, and I was like, there was a group, I won't say which group, I know them, but yeah. they were up to shenanigans. And yeah. uh, I looked over everyone and said to everyone, if you want to know, they're not here for us, but yeah. if you want to know what like a team of assassins look like, yeah. that's what they look like. So it's cool to just. I'm not an effective uh, enforcer at all, but you can start making decisions. And like when you're RPing, being like a kind of a, a bodyguard or something of yeah. that ilk, it's like very fun. Like, so for example, I decided I'd set off from the camp slightly after you guys yeah. so I could see any groups that might be following you. Yeah. I also Clock took along yeah. uh, a newspaper with me and I did the whole Ian, sort of thing. It worked out well at first. Yeah. But at one point, yeah. it really did look like you were the most suspicious secret agent looking man yeah. ever because know, your was face hilarious. was buried in a newspaper in very low light yes. outside. Yeah, 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 and yeah, it yeah. was just like... Although it's actually a really interesting newspaper, actually. Yeah, there are some really... We'll, yeah, we'll talk about newspapers. Yeah, it was well. a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so basically we're like, okay, if you're going to try and kill me, going to the Senate at a specific time is probably a good opportunity, yes. right? And we yeah. knew this. So 
I was going there to have the diplomats, diplomatic meeting where all the different ambassadors and the consul go and a few other people and we basically have a big chin wag about what's happening in yeah. the empire. So we go there. I literally have two people in the observation balcony, bungles by the door to the Senate mm. and uh, Wynne is on me like Yes, literally glue. on the Senate with you. Yeah, glue. that's great. Yeah. And um, I meet... Um, uh, I'd messaged uh, on on the Book of Faces um, the previous ambassador mm -hmm. who I knew to be very well connected. The guy called uh, Oswe, Oswe, yeah. um, really helpful, really really good. Had a bit of a chat in the Senate building. He comes rushing towards me with his friend, the K. Both of them quite heavily armed. Yeah, and we're like about to fucking throw down until he introduces himself, and I'm like, oh cool, right? Yeah, but like all of us are so paranoid that we're just like. Wins like this guy's giving off fucking shady vibes, man. Yeah. Like you need to watch this guy. Yeah. Like he is, he yeah. is up to. We something. We were all watching him yeah, as well. From, and like, all the of balcony, us were like, the doorway. Yeah. Some, yeah, we don't know. And we were talking and basically like had a bit of a chin wag and it was just like, why don't we have a meeting tomorrow? Where I like, I just said like, can we sit down so I can just like drill you with questions for like a, a half an hour, or whatever, just yeah. to kind of get a better information on what's happening and what I should be doing as ambassador. Really cool, but. Yeah. This also planted another paranoia seed, or it was more like fertilizer on this, where it was just like, could the ex ambassador to Jean yeah. be trying to bump me off in some way? Yeah. And it's like, it's, yeah, interesting, it's, right? It, yeah, it just had a whole number level to yeah. it, right? Um, um, and then I, we had the meeting, and basically I kind of did my thing, and kind of like there were uh, some, some diplomats were talking about. You know, maybe we don't need to do this. Maybe we can do this. And I'm yeah. just like, that is over. Yeah. Right? Like, we have to be really careful about what we do going forward now. Yeah. Like, does anyone here think it's a good idea to go to war with Jean? Yeah. Right? And everyone's like, no. And it's just like, well, let's fucking sort yeah. this out. Right? So basically, the idea was that I would try and get a motion through at Senate. Yeah. Um, basically putting us as some sort of neutral factor within this upcoming war for yeah. a variety of reasons i'm not saying i'm right or wrong by the way so um but i'm just this is what my intentions were um walking back was really cool basically walking around with bodyguards yes is amazing also it, i think it's important to say and i think you became quite conscious of this at various points but like you having bodyguards makes a lot of gain for a lot of people. A lot of people really enjoy being part of that game. I know a bunch of times you were worried that you were kind of like... Yeah, we should talk about this tomorrow, actually, yeah. on the Saturday. Not tomorrow, sure. on the Saturday, because another group kind of helped out, and I was. It's okay with my own striding. Yeah. Because, hey, I know Win, yeah. I know Bung, yeah. I know you. Yeah. And let's face it, that whole Senate sequence of everyone hanging around yeah. and just, like... Yeah. Eyes looking around, um, Win being literally like so close to me that it was like it, it, she was just so, so fucking good. badass. So the way she looked at people was just like I fucking I dare you to yeah. like you'll be dead before your your blade leaves your fucking sheath, right? Like she's yeah. like and, and the thing is as well, like I, I stepping in to help uh, alongside. Uh, her and, and Bung and Fang yeah, yeah. and Fang Fang got bored and walked off yeah which is fair Fang, enough totally fair dude, enough Fang's like 16 he's yeah. such a fucking ledge that it's just like yeah. but dude go be 16 man like yeah. don't want to hang around with it, you know? yeah he's 18 actually he turned oh, 18, 18 at the event oh is he yeah yeah I think he oh, turned 18 awesome. at the event he's yeah. a fucking top lad yeah, yeah. really really cool um, but no uh, having Bung there and like uh, Keys no, is I, the kind of character I, no, who he's not 18 he's 16 is he yeah you sure okay yeah I, I said it as a joke I was joking I did it. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, yeah. I see. Right. Okay, yeah. Um, but no, having Bung there uh, was really cool. Like, as well, because he kind of, he really did have that feel of this kind of eyes watching from the corner. Do you know what it like, made me totally... totally... Do you know The Godfather? Is yes. It part two, where they go to Cuba, and like, he has the guy that is actually assassin with him, but acts yeah. like a, like a, a manservant type yeah. thing. Like, like, he just gave those vibes. Yeah. Like, quiet, yeah. watching. Yeah like just we'll do any job you ask for yeah and, and like i think bung really enjoyed the game like it was and, and it really like um keys and win like their characters felt really strong like yeah. as as those kind of protector but roles what was cool was you'd expect these two badasses to kind of but they they never overcroached in each other's space yeah. it was like bung was my head of security yeah. and win was my 
like point At, person yeah, bodyguard, bodyguard yeah, right yeah. like who would be the jumping on me and getting me into the car get down or taking the, get, <laughs> out, Mr. get in the car do you know what I mean yeah. like you know what I mean <laughs> You know what I mean? Just <laughs> throwing me into the thing, like really fucking, yeah, really, cool. really cool. So full of imagination yeah, 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 yeah. and like excitement. And I, I think because we had credible threats, if it had come like, from anyone else, yeah. I would have been like, oh, it's probably nothing. Yeah. But the source it came from was enough for me to be like, this is could be quite credible, uh, and it also was being built on the foundation of paranoia. Of I course, already set up for myself. Of course, so. yeah. But I think that though that though that RP was. It, it really elevated it, right? Being a bodyguard oh when nothing's God. going on is probably quite dull. Being a bodyguard when there's a, a very credible possibility of action suddenly springing off Dude, it is was like, super hype. Be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. Like, I really want to get involved in the Jarm game, and I want to yeah. get this hat, yeah. and I want to be, I want yeah. to be somebody. You know what yeah. I mean? I want to affect the game. And then yeah. when it was like having a dumper truck reverse up to me, beep, the back open beep. up, and then it just lift up, and yeah. then just plot and game just. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just covering. It's too me. much. It's too much. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! And it was also like I don't know whether it's like this for every time that someone takes onto a position where there's always in this state of crisis. But the state of things with Jean was just so bad. Yeah. And then to add on this, this paranoia of an mm. assassination attempt, just t- uh, it was yeah. a lot, bro. It fed out amazing game to a whole bunch of different people throughout the whole weekend. And I'm sure we'll tap into it a whole bunch as a bunch of times but I think just that as a general dynamic surrounding that whole Senate sequence was really cool because that was the beginnings of it and it gets it gets more so as we go on yeah more of this Saturday but yeah. tell me about the next line in our notes okay again. so in the previous event all right, you uh, arranged basically for uh, smutty images of you to be produced and distributed to every nation in various places um at the time, it didn't quite land how either of us oh wanted it to Oh my god, land. I just understood what yeah. this means. Yeah. Uh, but, like, I don't know, I, like, I've, I've processed a lot of stuff and things yeah, like we're that. Much, and then, uh, we're both much more chill about this yeah, now, by the way. Yeah. Like, if you listen to that part one episode, it's pretty heavy. So, it is heavy. Uh, like, I think I was, it's an interesting thing. That the, this is it what is it is to be a human being. Yeah, right? and fuck this it, is, dude. Yeah. Let's, Hey, me and you, we want to be honest yeah, and transparent, yeah. right? That, that's what happened. Let's do it. Anyway, yeah. sorry, and I'm enjoying No, but, but it was... Suddenly, I was approached by a reporter who was gathering smutty images that had been distributed around the empire of different individuals. And she had heard about smutty images of uh, Talis Ashbourne and wanted one. And I suddenly found myself never more than ever wanting to give a smutty image. And not like that at all. Just like... Oh, what? You were like, hey, fuck, yeah. This would be really cool game. All of a sudden, I was like, isn't that cool? Like, if it gets, like, distributed in a newspaper another, or... Dude, I can get you another Yeah, I do. I actually want another yeah, copy. Yeah, remind me before yeah, you yeah, leave yeah. and I'll get it to you. Or, or like, um, if this reporter wants it sent, like, I'm sure... Yeah, I, well, I, I figure I'll send it. Either... A, I Also, maybe I've got digital versions of it. Whatever yeah. they want, basically. It, but That's anyway... fucking cool. It was so cool... And then, like, they, they, they... Hey, I was looking to find... And uh, I was like, oh, porn- I... I... I heard there's pornographic <laughs> images of you. I was wondering whether I could have some. Oh, my God. It That's was so funny, amazing. dude. It was so funny. And I just... Yeah, I don't know. F- from the flip of where I was with it, it was yeah. just such an interest, And, like, it just... It wasn't even a thought process, right? It was just, like, that fun game. I want to pursue it, right? Uh, I think it, it goes to show, like, how delivery of a thing... Uh, to like and how it's delivered to you and under the circumstances delivered I also think um, it's about how I I agree by the way but I also think it's a lot to do with um, our mental states going into E1 yeah Um, I think we were both like we were both feeling really good and stuff like this but at the same time like rocky on stuff right like we both wanted things from the event and all this stuff also I think the difference here was as well I felt I had complete control over the situation yeah which utterly changes it yeah. right the decision was entirely mine yeah. or whatever like a, you know whatever I want to do is entirely up to me by the way I, uh, I, I completely understand your reaction by the way right I think you're like uh, yeah. I, no, I, 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 I see you yeah. completely yeah. right like um, but at the same time it's also like people fucking loved it uh, yes. the fact is that you're now at this point with it yeah, yeah. and also that it's become part of the fucking law it's part the of the game Talis right there's so the looking for the, the, the Talis stuff by the way is like I don't know, it's just so cool. To, like, it's actually fun to play Talos, right? Which is like... And, and prior to this event, I would honestly say that Talos was basically me, yeah. right? I, I really felt like... And I still don't... I still would say I don't roleplay that hard, 
But like I've I've certainly pushed it a few gears more I than disagree. I disagree. Yeah. I think I, I I'm gonna push back on you a little bit yeah. there. Like I can see why you might think that, but at the same time, um, the uh, you are very much when, when I'm talking to you and I'm talking to Talis, they yeah. are different people. Yes. Yeah. Right. Like I'm very much aware of that. You 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 would and we'll get to some of the stuff you said over this weekend yeah. which I didn't forget by the way so I will be bringing that up what oh, you right. said on Dude, Saturday I, night I can't remember um, before I going to bed when we were both very tired oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to mention that for sure yes um, uh, you're as any party time Oh, look. Don't. Look. I, I, I hate that you have you're as any party time no, look. I want to go to you as any oh. I've been I'm I get on really well with a couple of you as any yeah. but for some reason as a nation don't really like me and it's like I oh, no, you'd be I want to yeah, party yeah. with you as in but I know I know Ian it's it's cool it's really it's like uh, going it's, to Phoenix Reach is always really fun like sounds amazing just uh, sounds amazing yeah like listening to like uh, Nicasia and Kess like sing and stuff it's just like it, it, it's, it's like when you really bust, cool the weird thing about you as in is from the outside, it's very quiet at night. You can walk yeah. through your end and think nothing's happening, right? Yeah. Open a tent flap door, and then you're in this world, right? It's so different from Songs and Stories, which is very much a performance space. Yeah. And what I really like about that, and why I really wanted to do it, uh, one of the two events, so I didn't, did, didn't do it last event, was because you get this kind of really cool vibe of there's like little meetings and groupings. Some people are literally having like a very chill conversation. Some people are literally having like a, a deep sort of political conversation yeah. and there's singing going on and, you know, people are drinking and socialising. And But it's really nice. But And there's still a, a good level of respect for the singing as well. Dude, I, It's I, I, a really awesome, but, comfortable but, environment to be in. Through the course of this weekend, I managed to go to like a whole bunch of different places. Not to party, but like... Like there are some giant tents and yeah. giant groups, and I'm sure these things are happening yes. all over the fucking place. Well, we'll get right? we'll get to some stuff on uh, on uh, Saturday, which is just is just too cool for school. Like I'm so jealous. It's so too jealous. cool for school. Um, but no, uh, Arizona Party Time was as ever an absolute delight, and I will certainly go again. Yeah, like it's I, I love it so much. All two um, of them and you. No, it's it like oh, anyway. I, 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 I don't know why I even did that. Joke. Yeah, that was so bad. It's such a low, you're you're, low you're crass, dude. I'm you're sorry. gross. I'm sorry, you're as end. Yeah, like I couldn't help myself. Awesome. That was weird, wasn't it? That was like a reflex. That was that's bad. I don't even do those jokes in the field, by the no. way. I'm the guy that goes, ah, oh, come on, man. Like, I think because it's, right? it's a it meme, right? It is a meme. It uh, is but a meme. but uh, like Arizona got loads of people. Stay hydrated. But the um, I uh. I drank an awful lot on Friday night. I partied pretty yeah. fucking hard. Also, I, our camp has... Yeah. It's just a party camp. Yeah. People love partying yeah. with us. People love partying with Sinwig. People love all of it. And it's Al- just like... Although we're reaching the point where we're not just a social camp, which has been really interesting. Like, a lot of business actually happens around yep. the socialising. Very true. Uh, and... A lot of trade. A lot of trade. A lot of brokering. A lot of politics a lot of just subtle informa- meetings dude, just RP. information transfer yeah it's like, happening yeah you'll be stunned at how many times i was just like having chin wags with people then it would turn out like oh this is really fucking relevant for these reasons are yeah. oh, you looking for that person i know yeah. this person right like yeah. shit like that happens all the time so yeah i, I was um, um I, I was just like walking around uh, and people would be just be like oh i'm just looking for uh, you know some information about the navarches or something mm-hmm. or what your plans are for the skirmishes and and things like that it was it was really interesting yeah like just having those constant interactions all, all the time um, um yeah it was great right that's the end of friday yeah let's uh, when we get into saturday everyone yeah it's, let's oh my god how far how long is this it's an it's hour long. and a half yeah we it's barely, only, even... we barely scratch the surface we have a lot to cover lot by the way features. everyone so i hope you're up for hey all hey, of it. If you're in a long drive, if you just get into the bath, put some more heat in. Yeah. Um, we'll be back very we'll be back. soon.